Max and Ruby. Ruby and Max. Does anyone remember Max and Ruby? For those of you who don't know and are curious, Max and Ruby is a classic from our childhoods. It's that show about the bunny siblings who are basically living a better life than most of us. But for those of you who might need a refresher, Max and Ruby is all about a little bunny named Max and his older sister, Ruby. Max is basically the OG chaotic neutral character. He's got one mission and one mission only, create maximum chaos with minimal dialogue. Meanwhile, Ruby is out here trying to hold it down, playing the responsible older sibling role like it's her job. And honestly, it kind of was. Max was like that kid at the grocery store who insists on riding in the cart, and somehow he's the one in control of where it goes. He's got this uncanny ability to find trouble in the most mundane situations. Need a simple errand done? Max will turn it into an adventure, trying to have a calm afternoon. Max will find a way to bring in the drama. He's like a tiny bunny version of a reality TV star. And then there's Ruby. Poor, poor Ruby. Uh, she's got big sister energy to the max. Pun intended. She's trying to teach Max important life lessons while also dealing with her own stuff, like bunny scout meetings and trying to bake the perfect cake. Ruby is basically every millennial who's trying to balance work, social life, and self-care, while their younger sibling, or let's be real, life itself, is just out there wreaking havoc. We are introduced to this dynamic duo in the very first episode titled Ruby's Piano Practice, Max's Bath, Max's Bedtime. We get a triple dose of classic Max and Ruby chaos. First up, Ruby's Piano Practice. Ruby is all set to practice her piano, channeling her inner Mozart. She's got dreams of playing a flawless piece for grandma, but of course, Max has other plans. Max's idea of a good time? Playing with his loud toys right next to Ruby. It's like when you're trying to concentrate on work and your roommate decides it's the perfect time to start a drum solo. Ruby's patience is tested as Max's antics keep interrupting her. Classic sibling dynamics, am I right? Next we have Max's bath. This one is pure gold. Ruby, ever the responsible big sister, tries to give Max a bath. But Max, being the little rebel he is, has a different idea of what bath time should be. Spoiler alert, it involves more toys and less actual bathing. It's like trying to give a cat a bath. Chaos, water everywhere, and a very uncooperative subject. Max manages to turn a simple bath into an epic battle of wills. And honestly, it's kind of impressive. Finally, we get to Max's bedtime. Ruby is determined to get Max to bed on time. She's got the bedtime routine down to a science. Story, tuck in, and lights out. But Max, he's got other plans. From sneaking out of bed to demanding more stories, Max pulls out all the stops to delay bedtime. It's like every millennial trying to establish a good sleep routine, but getting sidetracked by TikTok and midnight snacks. Ruby's frustration is palpable, and we can't help but sympathize with her plight. I think the first episode perfectly sets the stage for the Max and Ruby we know. Ruby is the epitome of that responsible older sibling, always trying to do the right thing, while Max is the embodiment of childhood mischief. It's a dynamic that's instantly relatable. Whether you're an older sibling who had to deal with a pesky younger one or you're the younger one who loved causing a bit of chaos. It introduced us to the world of Max and Ruby and gave us a taste of the hilarious sibling hijinks to come. But the ultimate mystery of the Max and Ruby universe was, where are their parents? Yeah, their parents were never around. The grandmother would pop in every now and then, but no parents in sight. Some say they're at work, Others think they're off on a permanent vacation. I like to think they're chilling in the bunny version of the Bahamas while Ruby handles everything. It's a whole vibe. Apparently in later, later seasons of the show, they return and have two more babies. It's because the beginning of the show took place in the 1940s, during W2. The father was probably away at war and the mother had to work long hours. I don't know if it was socially acceptable to, to leave a seven-year-old alone with her three-year-old brother back then, but it was also a different time. It would never fly today. I was even shocked to find out the show went on till 2019 and ended with its seventh season. I guess I gave up on it early, but as a kid in the early 2000s, living my best life with a bowl of sugary cereal and the remote in my hand, Max and Ruby would come on. And for some time, for the next 22 minutes, nothing else mattered. Max was like my spirit animal. 
chaotic, determined, and not big on words, Ruby. Well, she was basically my mom in bunny form, always trying to keep things under control and would sometimes come off way too controlling, but I guess parents sometimes do. Watching Max felt like watching my inner child run wild. This bunny had a one-track mind and it was always on mischief, whether it was chasing after a toy robot or trying to get his paws on that chocolate chicken, Max was relentless. And honestly, same. If I wanted something as a kid, you better believe I was gonna find a way to get it. Max and Ruby taught me that persistence pays off, sometimes in chocolate. But honestly, poor Ruby. Poor, overworked, underappreciated Ruby. And I get the hate for her character a little, but it really depends on how you look at it. Juggling a million responsibilities, trying to keep everything perfect, and dealing with a sibling who was basically a tiny gremlin. It was like watching my older sister deal with me whenever I decided that playing hide and seek in the middle of her homework session was a good idea. Spoiler, it was never a good idea. But here's the thing, Max and Ruby was more than just sibling antics. It was a crash course in life lessons. Ruby was all about teaching Max the right way to do things, and Max was all about finding his own path. It was like an early version of work smarter, not harder. Ruby would have the perfect plan, and Max would somehow find the shortcut, usually involving a mess, but still. One of my favorite memories is from Max's chocolate chicken, that episode I mentioned earlier. Ruby was on this intense Easter egg hunt mission, and Max was laser focused on the chocolate chicken. It was like watching myself during Halloween, my parents trying to get me to appreciate the festivities, and me just eyeing the candy like a hawk. Max knew what he wanted, and he went for it. I respected that. But the biggest mystery of all? Where were Max and Ruby's parents? They were like the Where's Waldo of the bunny world. My friends and I had so many theories. Were they working, on vacation, witness protection program? It was the ultimate childhood conspiracy theory. Ruby holding down the fort solo made her even more of a hero in my eyes. So, Max and Ruby was basically the blueprint for dealing with life's chaos. Max taught me to never give up on what I want, even if it means causing a little trouble along the way. Ruby showed me the importance of trying to keep things together. Even when your little brother is doing everything in his power to derail your plans, it was sibling rivalry, life lessons, and pure entertainment all rolled into one. It was honestly the perfect mix of chaos and those all too real sibling dynamics. Max is every little brother who ever existed, and Ruby is the epitome of that older sibling who just can't catch a break. Plus, let's face it, who doesn't love a good mystery about absentee bunny parents? If you enjoyed this trip down memory lane, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future dives into the world of cartoons. Until next time, folks.